Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. One thing I want, I want to look at that and point this out is that for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. That he is what? And that all depends on what it is that you need. He is. If you come to God, you must believe that he is. How many born-again believers in the house? So as a born-again believer, you had to believe and understand that he's the one who can deliver you. He's the one who can set you free and save you from your sins. So you come to him believing and understanding that you are the deliverer. You are the one who saved me from my sins. So I come to you and I believe that. But again, there's so much more to God than just salvation. Now, salvation is a wonderful thing, but there's so much more to him. And he wants us to come to him believing that he is. He is whatever it is that we need. When you listen, when you look at, let's say, Jehovah Rapha, for instance, Lord God is healer. Well, if you need healing, then you can understand you can go to him for healing because you, now you're understanding that's who he is and that's one of the things that he does. In the original scriptures, in the Hebrew and the Greek, they call God according to his attributes, the things that he's capable of doing. And he's a healer, so they call him Jehovah Rapha. He's peace. Jehovah Shalom. Whatever it is that you need, God is. Every aspect of our lives, God is what we need. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The word seek, one of the definitions, means to investigate. He is a rewarder of them that diligently investigate him. Investigating who he is. Who is God? We say we love him, we say we know him, but do we really know him? Who is he? Who is he to us? Yeah, again, we know him as, as, as Savior. We know him as God, our Heavenly Father. We know him as healer. If we've been sick and he's healed us and, he, and he's touched our lives before, but what about everything else that we need in our lives? We have to seek him out. We have to investigate him and who he is. So tonight we're going to do a little investigating on who God is. So tonight, the topic tonight is, is investigating God. We're going to investigate who he is, find out who he is. When an investigator or detective is researching someone, they ask questions, they interview this individual, they, they try to find out everything they can about this person, whether it is witness testimony, whatever it is you have to do to understand everything you need to know about this individual. So we're going to go back to the very beginning and understanding who God is, a part of who he is anyway, for tonight. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That right there lets us know that our God, as we investigate who he is, he's creator. He's the one who created us. He's the one who created everything that we see. He's the one who created the heavens and the earth. Our God, the creator. The word of God says that the just shall live by faith. And we go from faith to faith. So if we can believe God for our salvation in that area of faith, and we believe that, that we can also believe that he is the creator. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if the word of God says that he is the creator, then it means that he's the creator. There's no such thing as two rocks banging together. There's no fish that came out of the sea and just started growing legs and started walking and became a man. There's, there's none of that. God created the heaven and earth. And as we get into this, you're going to see that God created us. He created the stars. He created the sun, the moon, everything else that exists. God created. Our God is creator. Now, this word God in the original text, it means Elohim. And, and when we read in Genesis, it's going to speak of his be ability to create. Genesis 1 and 1. And we're going to go down a few uh, verses here. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Elohim said, let there be light. And there was light. God the creator. He said, let there be light, and there was light. Meaning that before there was light, there was nothing. But he spoke and said, let there be light. And all of a sudden, light appeared. Our God, the creator, said, let there be light, and light appeared. Do you know any in your friends list, whether it be on, on social media or whoever you see out in the street, that can take absolutely nothing and create something out of it? I don't know anybody like that but God. You take absolutely nothing. There's nothing in my hand, and I speak a word, and then all of a sudden, something appears in my hand. 
Only God can do that. Let there be light. Boom, and there it is. Our God, the creator. He is the one who did it. He that comes to God must believe that he is. Now we're seeing and we can believe that he is the creator. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God saying that our God is the creator. And God saw the light and that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. Our God is creator. Our God created the heavens and the earth. Our God created the, the, the light. Our God created the dark. Our God. So as we investigate him, now we're going by his own words, his own testimony. It's like if we're a detective and we're de detect, uh, looking for someone who's involved in a car crash, for instance, and we catch up with this person and we sit down and we start to question them and we listen to their testimony. Well, this right here is God's testimony of what went on in the very beginning. God is the one who created the heaven and earth. So as a detective, and I'm investigating him, I would ask him, how did all this come into be? Now, from his perspective, he wouldn't just say, well, God created. He would just say, I created the heaven and the earth. Because in his word, he said, you know, there's no other God besides me. So God is saying that I'm the one who created the heaven and earth. As we ask him questions and we investigate him and we see who he is, okay, so now I'm taking notes. Okay, God, you're saying that you are the creator of heaven and earth. Okay, now then tell me what's next. How does light appear? Well, it appeared because I spoke it and I said so. And all of a sudden, there it was. Now, I don't know about you, but I can speak for me. I can stand to use a spoken word from God and all of a sudden my whole life changes. All it takes is just one word from God and everything changes. What wasn't in your life before is in your life now. There was something negative in your life, he can speak a word and that thing is done with. I'm reminded of the woman with the issue of blood when Jesus told her, you know, look, hey, go in peace. We just letting her know, this thing, this issue of blood you had before, don't worry about it anymore. That spoken word right there, just let her know her whole life has changed. After her faith is what took for her issue to dry up as he touched the hem of his garment. He told her, he said, go in peace. Don't ever worry about this thing again. One word from God will change your life forever. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and the just shall live by faith. So if we're reading that God is the one who created the heaven and the earth, too many times we have too much faith in our own abilities, but our own abilities are limited. So if I'm looking for something to be created in my life, the first thing I need to do is go back to the creator, the one who has the ability to speak a word and everything changes, just like that. If we're gonna live by faith, we're gonna live by everything that he says. When the veil was broken, when Jesus died on the cross and the veil to the temple was broken from, from top to bottom, it was rent from top to bottom. God at that moment said to us, we no longer needed a priest to go to him for us we can now go to God for ourselves. But God didn't just make salvation available to us, that one part of himself. He made every aspect of himself available to us. Now we can go to God for everything that we need. If there's an issue in our life and we need God to create something for us, I can go to God creator. If I need healing, I can go to God who is my, my healer, Jehovah Rapha. I can, if I need peace, especially what's going on in today's time, Jehovah Shalom. I can go to you. Everything that I need in this life to make it, you are. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He rewards us with himself. He gives us more of who he is. And as we sit there and we read the word of God, now we begin to understand and see different aspects of him, different parts of his capabilities and what it is that he's able to do. Our capabilities, we're limited. We're very limited in what it is that we're able to do. But our God, unlimited. He can do anything. He says, is there anything too hard for me? There's nothing too hard for our God. Absolutely nothing. Whatever it is that you're going through, know that your father, your God, he loves you. And whatever it is that you need in this life, he is. He is what you need. And as we seek him out, it's not just things that we need. Yeah, we, we need things in life to help us live our lives and do what it is that we need to do and that he's called us to do. But above everything else, we need him because he's the one that allows everything that we need to come into our lives whether it be a spoken word, whether he just waves his hand and just says, make it happen, there it is. He sends an angel to go and do it, you know, do his bidding. Whatever it is that our God, he will take care of it for us. God is everything that we need in this life. And God, in verse seven, and God made the firmament and divided the waters which are under the firmament from the waters which are above the firmament. 
and it was so. Now, as an investigator, as a detective, if I send Pastor out and say, okay, find out how this borders and all this stuff came about. And he sits down, and he talks to God, and then God will give him this answer right here. I'm the one who did it. So he comes back, he takes his notes. We're investigating God to find out who, how did all this come to be? We're investigating him now. You're taking your notes, you see, oh, well, look, this is what he said. Now we can also talk to other people and understand their aspect of who God is in their lives, and we can get witness testimonies from them also as we investigate God and find out who created all this and who is he really. It's one thing to, to say, look, I love God, I love God, I love God. And that's a beautiful thing. We should love him because he first loved us. But how much do we really know about him? I mean, he is so vast, he is so big. How much do we really take time to really investigate and understand who he really is? And as we do, we're going to uncover some things about God that ordinarily, in our just regular studying and just regular living life, we're not going to never know unless we take time to actually investigate. You want to know who created this stuff, everything that's out here? God did it. God did it. God created the heaven and earth. What, do you, what, what else do we need to know? God did it. He created it. Verse 8, and God called the firmament in heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. The dry land we're walking on, guess who did it? God said, let it appear, and there it was. God is creator. As an investigator, investigate. Just find out who he is. Sit down and talk to him. Read in his word and find out what he says about himself and how everything came into being. And once you find out about God the creator, then go into God the healer. Then go into God your peace. Go into everything. I love God, Jehovah Roha. He is our shepherd. Go check out Psalms 23. And then understand when, you, when you're studying it and you're looking at it, then look at what does a shepherd do and understand that's who he is to you. Every aspect of life that you need him in, everything you need God to be in this life, God is. We don't need anything else. You know, God is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He rewards us. He's the reward. I had mentioned one time before in another topic, another ministry, where, another sermon, where God rewards us with himself. You know, heaven is a beautiful place. We all want to go there. Heaven is heaven because God is there. It's not, heaven is not heaven because streets are made of gold. Heaven is not heaven because there are pearly gates. I mean, there are people who have gold in their houses but doesn't make it heaven. Heaven is heaven because God is there. And if God decided to take his throne and move it to Cleburne, now Cleburne becomes heaven. God is our reward. God is our ultimate reward. He is everything that we will need in this life regardless. God is. God is. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called the seas. And God saw that it was good. Investigating God. God is the creator. God is creator. I love this because, everything, again, everything that we need, God is. We put too much faith in our own abilities. We put too much faith in other people's abilities. But as a believer, our faith needs to be in his abilities. That's what he wants. He wants us to believe in his abilities. And then if all of us in here start believing in God's abilities and we start walking in that, you're talking about bringing heaven down to earth. We can see some things change in this life because now we're operating in his abilities and not our own. Yeah. Not a long topic tonight, but there's something I, I really, really want to get into that the Holy Spirit has put on my heart to do. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So as we hear the word of God, it increases our faith. So now tonight we learn as an investigator that God is the creator. So now let's take what we've learned and let's take the faith that we've gained tonight by hearing the word of God, and we're going to apply it to our own lives. Now, if we read tonight that God is the creator, and there's nothing too hard for him to do, let's apply that tonight. If you are in this house tonight, and you need God to create something for you, let's stretch our faith. Let's just believe him. We've tried our own abilities, hadn't really gotten us, but so far in life, thank God, you know, his backing of us and pushing us forward and allowing us to, to experience some things. But if you're in this house tonight, and we read some scriptures, not a whole lot, but we read enough, to help build our faith in areas. If you need a job and you need God to create a position and a job for you, he's created. Let's believe him. Let's just stretch our faith and believe him. If you have your own business and you need a new clientele list, let's believe God to create that for you. God is creator. We read it. God is the creator. 
I don't care if the doctor said, look, man, you know, your, your kidneys, your liver is failing, whatever's going on with you, we need to put you on an organ donor list. Why can't we believe God to create a new liver, a new kidney, a new heart for you? Whatever it is that you need. God is creator. If we're going to stretch out and believe him, let's just go all out. Let's just go all the way and believe in God and just say, you know what? I don't care who thinks what. I'm believing God. I need some things in my life created. I'm going to believe you because you are the creator. We've done a little investigating tonight, and we found out you are creator. If you're a creator, then let's put them to the test. Let's try them out. Let's see. I know and, and when we talk about tithes and offerings, he talks about, you know, try me and see. Try me and see. Well, we don't just have to try them and see when it comes down to financial aspects. Let's try them and see when it comes down to our physical being. God, I need a new heart. Something's going on in my heart right now. The doctor's saying, hey, I need a transplant. Hmm. But I can believe that I can get on a transplant donor list, but I can't believe God that he can create a new one for me? I think he can. If you're in this house tonight, I don't care if the doctor said they got to amputate something, let's believe God he's going to recreate what it is and you ain't got to amputate nothing. If we're going to stretch out and believe him, let's just go all the way. Let's go out. The world is waiting for the sons of God, the manifestation of the sons of God. Those are going to believe God and stretch out. Why can't it be us? Amen. Let's just do it. Let, let's just go for it. Let's go for it. Don't even matter what it is. If you're here tonight, you need prayer for whatever, hey, whatever it is, let's get it. Let's do it. As a born-again believer, the Word of God says that it's through grace by faith that we are saved. If you have the faith to believe that he can save you, then you have the faith to believe he can create for you. Faith is already active in you. It's just taking that faith and applying it to another area of your life. That's all it is. I know it's easy to say that's all it is, but we got to stretch and we got to believe God at some point in our lives. We might as well do it right now, especially when we're in a house full of believers. It might be a little bit more difficult when you're out there by yourself around unbelievers, but when you're in a house of people that are full of faith and faith is already active in their lives, man, if something's going on, let's get it. Let, let, let's believe God. Let's stretch out. Let's just go for it. Let's go for it. If you need prayer, let's pray. If you need God to create something for you, a job, if you need God to create a business for you, new clientele list, let's believe him. Regardless of what it is, if it's, you don't want to mention it out loud, that we have women out here that can, you can talk to Reverend Cross about it, and, you know, we'll still pray with you. Pastor Cross is here. Prophet is here. I'm here. If it's a man issue, hey, let's talk. Let's talk, and let's bring this thing before our creator God and watch him create in our lives what it is that we need created. Amen? <laughs>